Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Texas Championship checking in with Spectrum 3847. Talk about this fantastic robot. I have Mason, Felipe, and Janet. The look of this robot is absolutely phenomenal and stellar, but past that, this performance of this two-time district winner so far has just absolutely been rocking it. Uh, if you've been following the content we've been doing on Open Alliance, this team is one of the spearhead teams for that as well too. So can't wait to talk about that cargo path going through and their climber coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Striker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. So Mason, we're going to start out uh, just a little bit on your drive, and then we're going to talk about your intake. So tell us about some of the process and the concept behind it. it sounds great. So just to start off, we are running a Swerve Drive Mark IV Inverted, which really helps you know, us move around and save space. Uh, on our intake, this year we decided to run something called a floating intake, which isn't something you see in FRC very often. We ran it in 2019, and we had a lot of success. So th this is what a floating intake is. Essentially, our intake will come down, and when it hits a ball, it'll roll up with the ball to ensure contact and make sure it gets into the rest of our intake. We previously tested with fixed rollers, but we really found that it didn't provide the consistency we wanted. So that rising and floating intake was something we found a lot of success with. Uh, secondly, we really wanted our intake to be rigid. As I'm sure all of you know, in this game, rigidity is key. Uh, everything tries to break on your robot yeah. uh, from, you know, rogue intake plates to pretty much anything else. Uh, so to help with that rigidity and help with that uh, robustness, I would say, uh, we added a couple features. One is this double plating you can see here. Um, it really helps maintain the rigidity we need to not break when we run it into walls. Uh, similarly, because it's a floating intake, whenever it runs into a wall, the wall will impact and then shove the intake up and store it. Uh, which helps lessen a lot of the impact that we frequently see. So, like I said, a ball will come down and uh, let's we can see it happening in real time. Intake will come down and it'll ride up see and push that pop it into up the a little robot. bit there, yeah. So. Yeah. When it, uh, I do want to ask, it looks like you have like a beam brake sensor or something like that on the side. Yeah. What are you uh, What are you actually using that for? Yeah. So uh, that that's something we're experimenting and with prototyping is something sure. I'm really excited about. It's a color sensor. So we actually have three of them. One here, one on this other side, and one down here. Uh, this covers a blind spot. What we do is that we use this color sensing in order to uh, see whether we're like intaking the correct ball. Let's say we're blue like our bumpers. If we intake a red ball, Felipe, would you mind holding this down? Um, the ball will come up here. It'll detect that it's a red ball, and it'll reverse the direction of this roller sure. and shoot the ball out. Oh, so it has to come out like kind of the top yeah, here, yeah, right? Yeah, come That's out the top cool. because this is still going this way, and this is now going this way. That's like the alternate problem that we'd always hear from teams where they have issues with the balls coming out here, but you're intentionally exactly. doing it so, so we'll intentionally do that whenever we see a ball that's the wrong color. We're still working out a couple kinks in the mechanism, so it's not ready, but you better wait for it at champs. Uh, last thing I want to ask no about point. the intake is the uh, silicone uh, material that you're mm -hmm. using as well, too. And we see that in a couple different spots of your robot. Uh, have you used that before, and then like, how'd you come about using it for this year's game? Uh, we have used it before, but this, is, I think, is the first time we used it this extensively. Uh, so we tested a lot of different materials this year. We tested rubber bands, we tested tactical rubber bands, we tested, you know, a thousand and one other things from wheels to everything. But we really found that this silicone, uh, 1.5 OD, you can find it directly off of McMaster. Sure. Over a two inch roller. And to get it on, you have to use a combination of compressed air and a lot of lubricant. It's kind of messy, but once you get the hang of it, it works really well. You can find more about that on our build blog. But we found it's really grippy really easy to maintenance and clean as compared to wheels and overall a really great you know like bang for your buck yeah i mean there's like a lint roller going on here man you just look at Absolutely, like just picking yeah. up everything off of <laughs> everywhere for it so uh, that's really cool uh let's keep moving on your robot we're going to go into that ball pathing in your uh, shooter area fleet base going to talk a little bit more about uh what's gone into that i'd love to hear uh once again so you guys kind of have uh the, the kind of the s curve design we've seen that be very popular this year with teams how's that been working out for you and then let's talk more about your shooter um, so the ball path has been working really well for us. The S-shape, we really love it because it just keeps us really compact. We stack everything on top of each other and we're kind of like staying in one little box. Um, it also allows us to only really have one roller. Like we, we only really have this one single roller of four inch compliant wheels. Um, and the ball just stays in contact with that roller, with those wheels, I'm sorry, 
throughout the entirety of its path along the up the S and into our launcher. So it just simplifies a lot of things. We only have we only have one one motor for it, and it's just a really easy belt right here. Um, and yeah, that's it for ball path. As we go into your shooter here, a couple of things I want to ask. Uh, talk a little bit more about the pre-rollers. I'd love to hear more about the uh, plastic gears that you have. Are these all 3D printed? Uh, yes, they are. So we like to, we love 3D printing. Um, so these are made out of like a polycarbonate blend. Uh, these gears, they need to be stronger. Um, while these purple ones over here are just PLA uh, because like they don't need to be as strong for the belts. Um, but yeah, they really just allow for like any specific number of teeth that we want, as well, like for certain spacings, um, as well as like quick iteration whenever we want to change something. Uh, so we found that be really useful. Looking um, at your shooter from like a flywheel weight perspective, so we got quite a few wheels uh, on here. Uh, can you just talk about in regards to like looking between the relationship of these two? How have you been trying to like mitigate like your spin on the cargo, and then where's kind of your sweet spot to shoot from on the field? Um, okay, sure. So we are not adjustable hood or turret. We decided early, like we decided pretty early on that we yeah. thought it would be necessary, but then we decided to change after that um, because we figured out that uh, our limelight distancing, we can like change the, the RPM of the wheels whenever we want to, and we can make shots from pretty much anywhere on the field. Um, moving on to like spin and, and RPM and stuff, uh, we're geared at a, I believe it's uh, it's like 17 to 27, so it's like almost two like two thirds, but it's not. Um, so the surface speed of this four inch wheels, as well as these two inch rollers, are pretty close to similar. So the balls exit without that much spin. Uh, we decided that would be really good because we like the idea of not having as much energy on the ball. Uh, we think less energy means less bounce out, and it'll just like, stay in the, in the goal nicer. So we started to finish up with your ride. We're going to bring Janet and talk more about your uh, climber. Uh, Janet, the first thing I just got to ask you, I noticed this uh, broken uh, <laughs> wrench that's on here, uh, yes. but I'd love to hear about the whole thing, but I think we, we got to mention this at some point yes. too. Okay, so our climber runs on a winch system. We have two hooks and two latches on either side, and then on the bottom it's connected through rope. Our winch system on the bottom wraps the rope around the tube, so as we extend when we release the rope, these are sprung up by springs on both the pivot point and underneath, so it springs up and then we go over the bar, and then once we're ready to climb, we pull ourselves down like a pull-up, and these are also uh, powered by springs. So this hits the bar, it goes down, and then it lands inside of our sure. latches. And once we're ready to let go, we just release, we fall onto the latches, and then we're on the rung. Uh, these specific <laughs> uh, wrenches are cuts. It's a way to tension the rope. So uh, since they're ratchet wrenches, we can just tighten it with, uh, with a wrench, and then it tightens the rope, and we can tension it and make sure they're the same on either side. So that is our ratchet system. Can we see the climber deploy? Maybe just walk us through each step as it goes yeah. through? You enable. Okay, so I'm gonna extend up. We drive into the bar, we pull ourselves down, and then we just finish the climb. And when we're ready to go to, uh, to the next rung, we just uh, extend again. Ooh, my bad. And that's pretty much it. So how many seconds are you climbing in typically, do you find? Uh, about 15. About 15? So, I mean, you're, you're a lot overall. Yeah, I've watched a few matches play. Spectrum, to me, just seems like they're always a complete package, but every year you kind of notch it up just a little bit more. Uh, so I can't wait to see, of course, how you do here at the Texas Championship. We wish you best of luck and hope to see you at World Championships as well. Thanks for taking the time, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.